<laughs> All right, so when I'm teaching these videos, like you're watching the videos in sequence, right? And here's the sequence, at least, you know, if you're going through from beginning to end and doing it that way. But uh, when I record them, I definitely try to record them in sequence, but every now and then there's like something I'm like, oh, I forgot to make a video about that. I totally have to put a video in there. So I got to jump back in time. I'm going back to <laughs> the past, back to the future, uh, and, uh, and create another video. That's what's happening here. I'm just giving you an FYI because I'm in my dad's office. And, oh, I just totally blew it. <laughs> and, uh, and in a future video, you'll hear me talking about that as if it's the first time you've seen me here. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to learn in this video is GitHub Git Ignore. And uh, I said we're going to learn about this. And then I realized, oh, I never taught it. And then I was in my class at the college and we were doing this. I was like, totally got to add this into this video training series. All right. So here it is. GitHub it, Git Ignore. So this is what .gitignore does. It ignores certain files in your Git repo. What does that mean? So let's go look at one of my Git repos. I'm going to open up Finder. I'm going to go to Documents. I'm going to go to, and this is just my directory structure, HTML, CSS. And here you can see this is a Git repo. I know it's a Git repo because there's this hidden .git file right here. If you want to know how to turn on to see your hidden folders, in either Windows or Mac, you can go Google that and how do I turn those on, right? How do I turn on hidden files, hidden folders? And it'll show you how to do it. All right. So when you when and you can also see it just at the terminal by doing your ls dash ls space dash la. Let me show you that. So here's your dot git. That tells me this is a git repo. And uh, and if I bring up my terminal and then I navigate to that and I do ls dash la. And I take a look at this. There's my uh, hidden folder.git. That tells me this is a Git repo. Okay. So all of that because Git ignore inside of a Git repo, you can tell it to ignore certain folders and certain files. Now, if you are using WebStorm, WebStorm is going to have its own hidden folder where it's just going to be keeping track of things for itself. That's the way WebStorm operates. And it's in the .idea. I don't know what that stands for. <laughs> IDE is Integrated Development Environment, so maybe that has something to do with it, right? But it's in that folder right there. And maybe it's a IDE archive or something. I don't know. But so it's you, you don't want Git to be tracking the changes here because you're going to have all of these changes in your repo and... Uh, and, uh, and then you'll be pushing those up to GitHub and you'll just be tracking all of this stuff to do with, you know, your IDE with WebStorm. So I want to ignore that file. That's what Git Ignore does. That's what Git Ignore does right there. So uh, how do we get a Git Ignore file and then how do we add that to our repo so that it is working? All right. So like I said, there's in many different ways to do things in GitHub. I'm going to show you my way, the way that totally works for me. Feel free to use this and know that there's other ways, obviously, right? So I'm going to go to GitHub. And the first way that you could get a, a Git Ignore file, and probably the best place to start out, is when you're at GitHub, go into create a new repository. You could also just do that right there. Previously, we were doing it right here. Go to your profile, go to repositories, and then create new repository. I'm starting to get little ticks on the HTML, CSS, meaning, look, I'm starting, that's when I started coding here. Here's like last semester, all that stuff. All right, so new repository, and then give it a name, some name. And uh, and then this is where I, I could get a git ignore file. So if I was to do like, I don't know if there's a JetBrains, there's not a JetBrains. Is there a WebStorm? There's not a WebStorm. So it's for language, right? So if there's some language you're programming in, you need a git ignore file for it. You could totally get it. Well, what about finding how do I ignore JetBrains files, WebStorm files? And that actually took me a while to figure out. Sorry, itchy eye. And uh, <laughs> I'm human. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I just originally was Googling, like, how do I ignore all this stuff? And I tried some stuff on my own, some syntax, but then I looked at what other people work. So if you want to ignore... Uh, JetBrain stuff, just go to github.com, goes to 11, 
And, uh, and when you get here, go to the Go Lang training. And then when you get here, you could scroll to the bottom, and here's the Git Ignore. And now this is going to have a lot of stuff in it. I'm going to click Raw so I can just get the raw text. But the things I'm looking for is a directory-based project format. It's kind of like here's WebStorm, so ignore the star.iml files. IDE folder, IDE workspace XML, you know, just like these are the different ones I use. Okay. You could also, so that's one place you could find it. And I just realized, you know what, there's this is also in the HTML CSS repo because I've put it there. So let's take a look at that. And I've cleaned this one up. So this is probably a better one to go to, HTML CSS, right? So I'm in that repo. I just did that kind of fast. So if you are like, well, what would you just do? I went back to my repositories. I went to HTML and CSS. This is another place where I have a .gitignore file. I went to .gitignore, and, uh, and so now I'm just looking at the one here, and it's a little bit shorter. And you can see some of the same stuff for WebStorm right down here. And the pounds mean I'm not ignoring this. Those are like commented out, but if I want to turn them back on, I could. All right, so I just copy all of this, and then I just put it into a file. So let's go through that process and I'll show you it not working and then I'm going to show you it working. Uh, so if, uh, if you think you got it, you could stop the video right now and be like, cool, I got it. But then if it's continuing to track WebStorm files, if you're using WebStorm or your gitignore is not working, what you may need to do is destroy your uh, repo on your computer. And so what that looks like is take this .git, .git folder, get rid of it, just delete it. Right, and then uh, first you want to sync. Make sure everything's current on your computer. Step one, right? Make sure you're current with your uh, remote origin master on GitHub. So sync, bring that down, and uh, and then delete this folder here, and then delete your repo up on GitHub, and then recreate your repo up on GitHub, and then you know reinitialize down on your computer, and then sync them. So if you got all that, stop the video. And, and, and you know, if it's working when you put in Git Ignore, great. If it stops working, that's the solve for fixing it, Todd way, right? And, uh, and then if that doesn't make sense, come back to this video and start watching from here forward. Okay, so now we're gonna do that. And uh, first thing I'm gonna do, I was just wondering where am I gonna do it? I'm gonna do it right here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this is current. So I'm in my HTML CSS directory. I'm going to do a git status. I'm not current. So I'm going to do git add dash dash all, git commit dash m. And the message I'll put in is bringing repo current and then git push. And so uh, now I'm going to do a command K to clear that out and git status. And I'm on branch master. Your branch is up to date with origin master. Now, I haven't said this yet in here. <laughs> but I said it the other day in my class. I'm like, I got to say this in here too. So master, like this is like my master, you know, my master branch, right? Here's the master branch. This is the main branch of code. You could create other branches, which is another level of GitHub, which you could get into later. Um, but we're on main. We're on master. So this is on my computer. Origin master is the same branch up at GitHub. They call it origin because you have all these different computers connecting to this one up on GitHub. So this is the origin. This is where everybody connects the source, right? From which they are syncing and getting code and staying in touch with and staying in sync with, right? That's the origin. That's the source. You could also think of origin as remote. So you could kind of think, oh, origin means remote. That's the GitHub one. Or you could think origin means GitHub. So anyhow, so master is on my computer. That's what I'm on. And I'm up to date with origin master. And master is, again, same thing, master, but it's up at the origin, which is GitHub. <laughs> so that's what that means. So I'm, I'm, up, I'm up to date. I'm gonna just going to do a git pull. And so git pull was, it's just like a check. It's, this is voodoo computing right here. I'm just like, okay, does this, you know, I'm up to date, but does that do anything? Right? Already up to date. So that would be if there's anything that's different up there, I'd pull it down. So I'm completely current. So what I have on my computer is exactly what's up on GitHub. Cool. So that's step one. Step two is I'm going to uh, CYA right here. And that means I'm going to cover my butt. <laughs> I made a copy of that. So if I screw things up too bad, I've got a copy right here. All right. So the next step is uh, I'm going to delete this. Pow. 
Um, do I want to delete that? Yeah, I'll just do it this way. So I'll, I'll skip the intermediary step. I'm gonna delete my git uh, repo. I'm gonna delete my git ignore, right? And so I already have a copy of it right here. I'm gonna leave this open. That's the git ignore from HTML and CSS. So I'm gonna, and that's just gonna be here. I'll put it into another text file for a second. It, we'll just do it right in this repo right here, which is my old repo and uh, temp.txt. All right, so that's just all right there. All right, so just so that doesn't cause confusion. So next step, I don't want to create a repo, GitHub. All right, so uh, I, the thing is, is with git ignore, I'm looking for finder, there it is. If I add my git repository and then I start doing commits and then I add Git ignore. Sometimes what happens, and this has been my experience, that all the time this is what happens is the files that's already tracking. Even if I've added Git ignore, it's going to keep tracking those files, right? Because I've already started tracking them. I'm going to keep tracking them. So you got to kind of start over, and uh, and then this is the Todd solve, right? And uh, and then it will, you know, n never track those files. And since it was never tracking those files, it won't keep tracking those files. You want me to say that again, right? If, uh, if, if it's already started to track files and you add a git ignore and you say ignore those files, well, it's already started to track them, so it's not going to ignore them. So you got to kind of like start over where it hasn't started tracking them and then add the git ignore and it'll never have tracked them and then add your git repo and it'll, it'll initialize and see the git ignore and say, okay, I'm not tracking this stuff. All right. So uh, we're going to get rid of uh, the git ignore too. And then I'm going to go up to, there go all my commits. That's kind of a bummer. I'm going to go up to uh, my, uh, my, uh, my profile and my repositories, and uh, I have all those commits in there. I don't think I've done anything that's commit dependent so far. So I'm going to come in here, God help me, and uh, go to settings. And this is just good for you to see. And then in settings, go into the danger zone. I'm going to delete this repository. And here we go. Audios. Kapow. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new repository. And the reason I did that is, uh, <laughs> is because uh, it becomes a little bit difficult. It's a little bit more difficult to sync with a repository that already exists with one that, uh, you know, is brand new on your computer. So this is just the easiest way. That's why I'm showing it to you this way. All right, so I'm going to create a new repository. And I'm just going to call it the exact same thing, right? So it's HTML-CSS. -HTML there we go. And not add anything. So that's it. And so I've just created a new repository. Now over here for my repository on my computer, I'm going to do an ls-la. Clear that out. And I don't have a, a git. And I don't have a git ignore. So I'm going to add a git ignore. So I'm going to do a nano.git ignore. And nano is just a text editor. And, uh, and the file I'm adding is nano. Uh, nano is going to open and it's going to create a file .git ignore. When it asks me to say what I changed, it'll say, do you want to save it to .git ignore? That's what I want. And I also want to make sure that this .git ignore file is right here in the root of where I'm going to initialize my repository. And I'm going to add my uh, .git ignore file before I initialize. So .git ignore. And I'm going to come copy my uh, git ignore file right here, same one I had before, paste it in there, and I can scroll up and see it's all in there. I'm going to control X down here to exit, and then do you want to save this? So Y for yes, and do you want to write it to this file? Yes. All right, so now when I do my ls-la, I have my, have my dot .git ignore, so now I could do git init, and uh, now when I do my ls-la, use my arrow, whoops, Oh, reinitialized. <laughs> All right, now when I have it, there we go. I've got my .git. I have my .git ignore. Cool. And uh, DS store is just a Mac file that Mac puts in there. Uh, doesn't do anything. There we go. And uh, and next, uh, I'm going to do uh, this stuff over here. So I could do my git add, git commit. So my git add, git add dash dash all. Oops all and a git commit dash m first commit 
and uh, and then clear that out and then get commit. I need to do this one right here. Boom, boom, boom. And then get push you origin master. So it's putting all that code up on the GitHub. Cool. And now I'm going to go look at that HTML, CSS, and I've got all that code there. That's excellent. And my get ignore file is there. And, uh, and uh, it's ignoring all these IDE folders. So everything should be working just fine. So get status. And uh, I could add just some temporary file, nano temp.txt, and uh, something, and then uh, save that, and then get status, and get add dash dash all, adds, oh, that's not where we do that, and then get commit dash m, adds temp file for check, and then get push. And clear that out and uh, and then I could uh, come over here and I could refresh this and there's temp.txt something and then I could come over here and ls-la and I could remove uh, with force I think that's what that F stands for meaning uh, I don't want to I definitely just want to remove it temp.txt and remove that and then ls-la and that is gone and then get status and then get add dash dash all get commit dash m removes check and get push okay and get status up to date get pull already up to date and get log i can see my log so i first commit adds temp file for check removes check and then i can come over here and refresh and the temp txt is gone so that's uh that's adding a git ignore and you need to add that like just the simplest ways to add that right when you uh you know start working so there are other ways to add it and uh and the way i did it is a little bit like uh you know there's different ways to do it so i know there's different ways to do it but this is the way that i feel is the easiest way to teach just right at the beginning so that's the way the reason i'm i'm sharing this method with you all right that's it that's the get ignore file i know this video is a little bit long but uh if you're having issues where you're you're getting all kinds of changes to um this folder right here, uh, that's how you get rid of those changes being tracked by your Git repo.